For more than 50 years, the IACP has been proud to recognize outstanding law enforcement officers through the IACP Target Police Officer of the Year Award. Our nominees this year highlight the importance of working together to strengthen communities and protect lives. Target is deeply committed to the communities where we do business because there are communities. We support organizations like the IACP and continue building strong relationships with local law enforcement partners to help make our neighborhoods and our neighbors safer and more secure. The incredible stories of this year's nominees epitomize the efforts of police officers to increase public safety around the world every day. Each of these officers exhibit incredible courage and perseverance while remaining true to the motto, to protect and serve. Chicago Police Officer Martin Hernandez and his partner observed an apparent drug transaction and moved to investigate. Officer Hernandez exited the passenger side of his vehicle to question the suspect, who began to run. As Officer Hernandez closed distance on the suspect, she turned and fired, hitting him in the chest. Saved by his bulletproof vest, Officer Hernandez returned fire along with his partner, wounding the suspect and taking her into custody. Officer Hernandez then called for emergency medical services and rendered aid to the offender until they arrived. Special Agent Crystal Greiner and Special Agent David Bailey were serving as Dignitary Protection Division agents at an early morning practice for the annual Congressional Charity Baseball game when a gunman opened fire from behind the third base dugout. The agents immediately radioed for assistance and returned fire, drawing the gunman's attention away from the unarmed players on the field, some of whom were seriously injured. Special Agent Greiner was shot in the leg, but kept engaging as Special Agent Bailey, hit by bullet fragments, advanced onto the field toward the gunman's position. Within two minutes, Alexandria officers Kevin Job, Nicole Battaglia, and Alexander Jensen arrived to provide support. While Officer Job engaged the suspect, Officer Battaglia drew the shooter's attention toward her cruiser, allowing officers Jensen and Job to move into a better position to engage the suspect as he moved behind home plate. The officers kept the shooter engaged and unable to target further civilians until he was neutralized and taken into custody. Lieutenant Scott Smith was one of the first officers to respond to a call that an active shooter was inside the Pulse nightclub in Orlando. Smith organized a team, entered the building, and fired at the heavily armed gunmen, allowing fellow officers to rescue dozens of patrons and employees some of whom were critically injured. Lieutenant Smith then directed the deployment of arriving SWAT operators as the gunman barricaded himself in a bathroom with several hostages. After a tense standoff, the gunman told negotiators they had 15 minutes before he would detonate bomb vests he had strapped to four of the hostages. Lieutenant Smith coordinated the breach of the bathroom wall from the outside, and the gunman emerged, firing rapidly. Despite the imminent danger from explosives and gunfire, SWAT team members, including Smith, returned fire, killing the suspect and rescuing the hostages. Technical Lieutenant Peter McLean and Technical Sergeant Brian Rumrill battled high winds, blowing snow, and low thick clouds to rescue two college students stranded near the summit of Algonquin Peak, New York's second highest mountain. Following a half dozen unsuccessful attempts, the rescuers took advantage of a break in the clouds that lasted only seconds. Fighting strong winds to keep the helicopter steady, they lowered a cable and lifted the frostbitten climbers to safety. Once the couple was taken to a nearby medical center, McLean and Rumrill took off again to rescue two exhausted forest rangers who were caught in deep snow during the search. The valor of these finalists speaks directly to what the law enforcement community stands for each day and the remarkable work being done by officers around the globe. These men and women are committed to building stronger and safer communities for us all. We are grateful for the dedication, perseverance, and commitment of this year's finalists and the entire law enforcement community. And it is in the spirit of that community, due to the incredible courage of the officers involved, that the 2017 IACP Target Police Officer of the Year Award is shared among two sets of nominees. Lieutenant Scott Smith of the Orlando Police Department, Special Agents Crystal Griner and David Bailey of the United States Capitol Police, and Officers Nicole Battaglia, Kevin Job, and Alexander Jensen of the Alexandria Police Department.
There are those unique situations where you know when you go in, this may cost you your life. This was certainly a, uh, you know, one of these horrific active shooter situations. Um, these are, occur on a, on a regular basis. And it doesn't matter what jurisdiction you're with. It doesn't matter what law enforcement agency, what patch you wear. Uh, everyone trains for a possible active shooter. Sad to say, it's something that happens more and more often. Uh, but I think law enforcement has definitely taken a lot of steps to be prepared for it. The area where this happened, it's a beautiful area on Monroe Avenue. The YMCA is right there. And there's a dog park right next door to it. And to the left of it is a child's playground. There's school bus stops nearby. Kids, moms, dogs, uh, people going to the coffee shop. Uh, they had uh, gone down there with uh, House Majority Whip uh, leader uh, Steve Scalise, which was their uh, assigned protectee that day had taken him out to the field. The suspect engaged David and Crystal, engaged the group of members and staff and children on the field uh, with high-powered assault rifle and a handgun. David and Crystal immediately went into operational mode and returned fire. Even after receiving um, gunshot wounds, both of them continued to engage the uh, shooter. Uh, they knew the individual was trying to make access around the baseball field to get access onto the field. Uh, and if they let that happen, that would have that would have been disastrous. When the call came out initially, it was uh, towards the conclusion of our shift. Shots fired, that was the call. Um, and then we heard Battaglia come on the radio, taking fire, essentially. Their response to it was there was no hesitation, because there couldn't have been any hesitation to it, just from the time factor. They got there that quickly. Officer Job, who responded on the scene at the very beginning, uh, responded to the area where the officer, the special agents were from the Capitol Police without cover. Kevin gets there, it's very confusing because uh, the U.S. Capitol Police officers were in plain clothes. So there's, uh, you know, folks firing at each other and just trying to get a sense of who's a bad guy, who's a good guy. Officer Battaglia, uh, Nicole, arrived at the scene at a slightly different location, and she immediately took fire from the subject with a long rifle. She pulled up and drew the shooter's attention to her and stopped him from shooting civilians. That enabled our other officer, Officer Jensen, to get in a position where he could triangulate on the subject. And they start working as a team together. David and one of the Alexandria officers developed into a contact team and went forward even further and it was Officer Jensen's um, marksmanship capabilities at, I believe it was 40 to 50 yards away, that he was able to, to execute what he needed to do and stop them. We're in front, yeah. that's where they are. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hard cover, guys, hard cover. We were extremely fortunate that Scott was working that night. I hear the off-duty unit come over the radio, and in the background, you could hear the uh, shots being fired. And that was the first time I heard Scott's voice and Lieutenant Smith's voice say, hey, if he's still shooting, you need to go and challenge him. That was the first thing I remember him saying on the radio, and I'm like, that's a damn good thing to say on the radio. I think Scott recognized the situation as something that was different. He still heard gunfire, and um, to kind of lead from the front, is, is the best choice. Walking up to the club, I knew that there were gonna be dead people or people that are dying or injured, but it did not prepare me for what was inside. Not knowing the layout of the building, not knowing where the gunfire is coming, they're trying to kind of methodically search and figure out, you know, where it's coming from. I saw Lieutenant Smith in like a diamond formation, walking across the dance floor on the opposite side of the room, which clued me into the fact that None of this area is secure or has been searched. Going through every little nook and cranny, some places that you would think that, no, one person could not possibly hide there, we found five people. Michael opened up a door that was behind us, and it ended up being a bathroom with a lot of people in it, and we got all those people out of there. Once we had basically eliminated any possible other areas in this club that he, the terrorist could have been, um, he popped his head out of the door. The way he's looking at Scott, Scott's taking that as like, hey, this guy is 
assessing me, he's looking at me, he's deciding if, if he can win. That was Scott, you know, first one in uh, to this uh, active shooter situation, not knowing where the suspect is because of the echoing and because of the sounds, he still went in there, uh, which is amazing. And uh, I will say, frankly, the most bravest and courageous act I've ever seen as a police officer. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. This way, this way, this way, this way. I was talking to some of the patrons in the club that we had removed, and they were saying that they were getting texts from people inside the bathrooms saying that he is threatening to place explosive vests on us. And send them out to the four corners of the building and detonate the building. We decided that the, the best course of action was to try to rescue as many people as possible, so we chose the south bathroom. As they moved the, uh, the Bearcat around to the north side to, to be able to breach that wall, uh, the gunmen came out and start firing at our officers. So our officers returned fire um, with Scott, Scott Mean right there with them, returning fire, and they were able to kill him. We train to respond to these type of incidents, but you don't really know how you're going to respond. It takes special people to, to kind of charge into gunfire and to go out there and put their lives on the line for complete strangers because it's the right thing to do. Just the most amazing thing is doing what's not natural to us which is going towards sound of gunfire when everybody's running past you the other way. That doesn't come through thinking. That comes through heart. It's, it's the one thing they train you for, but you're never given that experience, and you never know how you're going to handle it when it actually comes into play. And they did it. They did it without question. They did it without fear of their own lives. They just did what they had to do, and they got the job done. And they, they ended it, and they saved a lot of lives that day.